The Office of Personnel Management has a new list of recommendations from the National Academy of Public Administration. Some former officials say there's a risk those recommendations could get lost in the shuffle. Janice Lachance is Executive Vice President at the American Geophysical Union, former director of OPM. Janice, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. You told the terrific reporter at Federal News Network, Nicola Grisco, OPM is going to need partners to move forward. Who are those partners that OPM will need, and what will they need to do for OPM to realize the vision that Napa laid out or that the Biden administration determines with Congress or whatever? Interestingly, I think all of these potential partners and, in my view, required partners are of similar importance, right? They need all of these people to move forward. So first of all, this complicated relationship that OPM has with the Office of Management and Budget has to be clarified. Uh, personnel in the federal government is a complex topic and there's room enough for everybody and there's so much talent in both agencies but they just have to figure out how to work together moving forward and who gets the last word on policy who gets the last word on budget who gets the last word on how we measure success those sorts of collaborations with OMB I think are critical I think the White House, per se, the office of the president, the president himself is committed to the federal workforce. So I think the new OPM director is going to start with a tremendous advantage there. We saw evidence of this even before the inauguration when the president stepped out and talked directly to federal employees about how important they were. But the other key partner here is Congress. Congress is really going to have to think about how to resource OPM to make it successful, how they're going to help get it to its desired state. And that's going to be a combination of appropriations, oversight, authorizing bills that really will send a signal to the entire federal government that OPM should have the expertise and should have the resources to do a good job for the entire federal government. And that last point is also key here. OPM definitely should have authority over all personnel systems across government. That's the only way we're going to be able to deal and come up with a strategic approach to what is uh, the country's key asset, which are federal employees. The most important, I think, of those three uh, in the congressional triumvirate that you laid out there, appropriations, authorization, oversight, strikes me as appropriations. I was really struck by the fact that the recommendation that Napa made to transition OPM from a fee-for-service organization to an appropriated organization didn't get much more attention than it got. A lot of the other things you know, the, the GSA stuff and all of that got a lot of attention. Understand that. But, I mean, that's revolutionary, as you well know, having led that organization, yeah. what, what potentially an appropriations infusion could do for it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think the message that it sends beyond just OPM is going to need the money to fund this, the message it sends is that the entire federal government, every personnel office in every agency needs the support and the expertise of an agency like OPM, whose sole job is to make sure we have the right people in the right jobs for the American people. And having to pay for that sort of, you know, giving money to one agency only to have them give it to OPM for advice that really should be fundamental and should be available across the government equally to all agencies. You know, I, I think we're just moving the dollar bills around the game board here. It's not as though it's more money. It's just saying to the entire federal government, you're going to have this help. You're going to have access to it. And we're not gonna worry about moving money around the government uh, and thinking about who pays who. It's going to be available. It's important. We're sending that signal. We want you to take advantage of this expertise. Janice, the 
Janice, this piece is, uh, that uh, Nicole wrote that you're quoted in is titled, Advocates Worry Napa Report Will Be Easily Forgotten. What is that congressional triumvirate that you laid out enough to make sure that it's not forgotten, that things actually happen? The ideas are great, people like the ideas, but if the ideas stay on that report and don't ever manifest themselves in real life, it's completely useless. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm hoping is that the Biden administration and the new director at OPM is really going to embrace the report and make it a part of their strategy and their plans going forward. And I, people have often said that there aren't a lot of champions for the civil service in the Congress. And that's true in a way. It's not the issue that's going to get you the headline back home. But every member of Congress, every senator has federal employees in their state, in their districts. And there are enough of them to form a core and to really work toward getting some of these things done and getting them enacted, getting them funded. So I hope that they stay focused on this. There are people like Chairman Jerry Conley of the Government Operations Subcommittee who has already done an extensive amount of work to ensure OPM's success going forward. And I hope he and his colleagues really focus on this, find champions in the Senate and make this happen. Janice, thanks very much for coming on. It's great to have you. It's great to be here, Francis.